Welcome to the Gigaspaces ZAP80 JPA demonstration. What we'd like to do today is see the standard pet clinic demonstration application for Spring, which uses JPA ported to Gigaspaces. ZAP provides a number of interfaces to the data grid, a native API for Java and .NET, the client neutral memcached, a document API, JDBC, uh, a, a map interface, a key value interface, JMS, uh, and others really. We added JPA because JPA is the de facto storage mechanism for Java developers. For them, this eases migration to a powerful and incredibly fast data store. The migration in most cases means some slight annotation additions and a configuration change, the sort of thing that can be done in very short order in most cases. What we've done is taken the standard Spring Pet Clinic application and made those changes. First, let's switch to Eclipse and take a look at the persistence XML. Um, well, all we've really done here is we've taken out most of the persistent stuff because it's not necessary and made a, you know, some configuration changes to use OpenJPA with the uh, Open Spaces Storage Manager. This means really that we're using standard OpenJPA and it'll go directly to a gigaspace. Now let's take a look at some of the data items. Here we see the VET, which is just a standard you know, entity. There's really nothing special here. We've added some annotations here for space, uh, just to let the space know that it's not necessary to even try to serialize some of these things. Um, this is really the migration right here. As we make the configuration, we add some of these annotations to let the space know how to best uh, manage the data. Um, with the migration to the Gigaspaces, you know, JPA made, you're really using the same old JPA. Here, if we look in our pet clinic service, we see here the you know a standard JPA query. There's nothing special here that says we're using a, a, a data grid. We're just, you know, we're using log cards. We're doing everything just as we would normally do with JPA. Um, you know, there's nothing really special here, and that's really the power of this API that we don't have to go through a migration phase. Let's go ahead and you know, prove that the application works just so we can show you know, some data. First, let's look at our, our, uh, our actual data store so we can see the data that we've got. Here we can see our data types being represented. Let's take a look at the vets. You know, as you can see, we're just retrieving data. Um, let's take a look at the owners. We'll add an owner in just a moment. You can see here there's nothing really special here. I've got six owners in there already. Um, let's go to the application and add an owner. Let's see, we'll add Getty Lee here. And let's give him a, a nice, you know, unique number that's not going to attract any attention anywhere. And here we've added our owner. We can go back and we can find our owner. And we can see right here, we've got our owner back. Nothing really, you know, spectacular. Um, we won't notice, we wouldn't have noticed any real speed differences even, even if we were using a database, but I don't actually have a database running in my local cluster. I'm running purely data grid. If we switch over here and rerun the query, you'll see that we now have another, uh, another owner stored. You can see here that we're actually adding data. We could do the whole, we could add pets to them. We could do the whole nine yards. Um, you know, and so what you have here is a standard JPA application, one that's used to demonstrate spring, really, which is very common. And we're demonstrating the fact that we can use JPA without really going through a whole lot of API changes or anything like that and use the data grid for our data store, which means that we have incredible horizontal and vertical scalability, just depending on the resources we want to throw at it. Um, you know, our data retrieval speed is actually faster. We can use things like MapReduce to, uh, you know, aid processing for a pet clinic. It obviously wouldn't be necessary. But for real applications, this power is really kind of hard to, hard to overstate. It's, it's actually incredibly powerful and something that I think that, um, you know, most JPA developers would love to have at their disposal. Thank you very much.